If reality is a simulation, who built it? If everything you see, touch and love is just code, then who's typing at the keyboard? Two worldviews circle each other like twin dragons in the sky. One says reality is digital, a grand simulation. Elon Musk famously suggested the odds we're in base reality are almost zero. To him, we're probably living inside a cosmic video game. And the programmers, some higher intelligence, perhaps post-human descendants or alien civilizations, the other says reality is divine. A creation, yes, but not from algorithms, from God, spirit, or some eternal principle. This is the foundation of every major religion. The universe has a creator, and with creation comes purpose, morality, and destiny. The religious crowd whispers, God is a coder, the simulation crowd insists. A coder is no God. Both perspectives wrestle with the same mystery. How did reality begin? But both also risk dogma. One makes you worship machines. The other demands faith without questioning. And in this dangerous debate, humanity often confuses origins with meaning. At a conference in 2016, Musk put it bluntly, there's a one in billions chance we're in base reality. His reasoning, look at video games, Pong evolved into hyper-realistic VR in a few decades. Imagine a million years of progress, civilizations capable of rendering entire universes would almost certainly exist. And if they exist, they'd probably run simulations, many of them. So statistically, we're almost definitely inside one. This isn't just stoner philosophy. Oxford philosopher Nick Bostrom formalized it in his simulation argument. If technologically advanced beings can simulate universes, then the probability we're living in original reality becomes vanishingly small. Musk's words sparked headlines, memes, and late-night debates. But beneath the hype lies a haunting question. If we're inside a simulation, who or what? pressed play. But long before Silicon Valley, ancient mystics already asked this question. The Gnostics, a mystical sect around 2000 years ago, believed our world was not the highest reality. They said a false creator, the Demiurge, trapped souls in an illusionary world. Behind him was a higher hidden god the source of true light. Sound familiar? It's basically the first simulation theory, but dressed in spiritual language. To the Gnostics, our world wasn't ultimate truth. It was a flawed copy, a shadow. The real spark lived beyond. In this light, Musk's programmer is just a modern demiurge. Tech billionaires and mystics end up circling the same riddle. Maybe what we see isn't the realest real. Today, scientists aren't just theorizing about simulations, they're building them. AI systems create entire virtual worlds, populated by agents that interact, learn, and even form cultures. Researchers have watched AI villages invent languages, cooperate, compete, and evolve. From the inside, those AI agents would never suspect their universe is artificial. Sound familiar? That's us! The very act of running simulations in labs suggests the possibility we ourselves are in one. And if we, primitive humans, can already generate pocket universes, what could a civilization a million years ahead of us do?
Then there's the strangest glitch. Collective false memories. Whole groups remember Berenstein Bears instead of Berenstain. Or Nelson Mandela dying in prison. Even though he didn't, these shared misremembrances spark theories that timelines are shifting, that we're living in a multiverse, or that reality updates sometimes overwrite the code. Skeptics call it bad memory. Believers call it evidence of glitches in the simulation. Whatever the truth, the Mandela effect unsettles us. Because if memories can rewrite themselves, what else can? What unites these stories? Each points to the same unsettling frontier, the suspicion that reality is not what it seems. Science pushes one way. Quantum mechanics tells us particles exist as probabilities until observed, as if the universe waits for a render command. Physics experiments hint that information, not matter, might be the fundamental fabric of the cosmos. Even gravity and space-time might emerge from deeper informational structures. It all sounds eerily like code. Spirituality pushes another way. Religions insist that what we see is not ultimate. Hinduism speaks of Maya, the veil of illusion. Christianity speaks of seeing through a glass darkly. Buddhism speaks of samsara, the cycle of illusion and suffering. Mystics across tradition say the world is not final. There is a source behind the source. And so, science and spirituality, long at odds, now circle closer than ever. One speaks of code, the other speaks of God. But maybe they're pointing at the same hidden reality with different words. The clash arises when people cling to absolutes. If you're convinced we're in a simulation, you risk dismissing all meaning as artificial. Why care about love, art, or justice if we're just code? If you're convinced God created the universe, you risk shutting down curiosity. Why question, experiment, or explore if the answers are already written in scripture? This is where the dangerous debate becomes a trap. People argue endlessly about who built reality instead of asking what do we do inside it? Think about a video game. Whether it was built by Nintendo or Sony doesn't change your experience as a player. What matters is how you play, how you cohere with the rules of the world and what story you live. The same goes for reality, the origin matters less than the coherence. And here lies a strange twist. Maybe the simulation theorists and the mystics are both right. Maybe the code and the divine are not opposites, but layers. What science calls algorithms, spirituality calls logos. What we call rendered pixels, mystics call manifestation. The map differs, but the mystery remains. The coherence lens cuts through the debate. It doesn't ask who built reality. It asks how stable is your reality. A simulation can still be coherent. A divine creation can still be incoherent. What matters is whether your vortex of perception, body and consciousness aligns in a way that sustains life, connection and meaning. If you obsess over origin, you get stuck in dogma. If you anchor in coherence, you gain freedom. Think of a dream. Does it matter whether your brain or some external entity generated it? No. 
What matters is, does it hold together long enough for you to experience it? Coherence is the difference between a dream that collapses into nonsense and a dream that feels as real as waking life. The same with society. Whether we live in God's world or a programmer's world, the deeper question is, can we keep our shared rendering coherent enough to survive? Coherence liberates us from the false binary of simulation versus creation. It says, stop asking who built it, start asking how you live inside it. So next time someone asks, Is reality a simulation or did God create it? Smile and answer, It matters less who made it and more whether we're coherent inside it. Because the rabbit hole doesn't stop here. In episode 8, we step into the future. A place where realities won't just be discovered, they'll be designed. Follow the white rabbits. The next rabbit hole awaits.